love that. I love the meaning of text, sacred text, and it's like texture and textile. You know? I like to bring this up a lot in, because it's the weaving of our lives and the weaving of meaning. So let's do a little weaving of what strikes me. Um, uh, the richness of what, what I hear in you, Chris, it takes me back to Kristen's remarks. Of, how, do I, how do I see things? You know, And it, do I see them as gloomy, or do I know that there's a passage going on here? Do I know that hard work is worthwhile? Just sitting with my friend Sean, he typically, you know, with a smile on his face, gives me a list of the things he's doing, and he's always looking at me, saying, how are you? What are you up to? How are you feeling well? You know, I'm saying, okay, let me in a little bit. Well, I got this, and I'm going on, and you don't complain. But I'm always amazed at what you're accomplishing. We might look around our circle and say, at any point in our life, look at all that we're doing. But then look at the choice you made. I'm inviting you to look at a choice and say, I, I chose to be here. My sister and I had a little bit of a talk about it, and so with her here, but I, I, I Alan, without you being here in Albany last year, I, last week, two weeks ago, I, I, I quoted mom, and I think maybe all of us have had moms say this. I, I remember my mom's tone of voice on this one when I trailed in the side door of our house once or twice. I didn't look really good. I don't know that I looked gloomy because I just had a good time, but I got gloomy as soon as she greeted me. Because she said to me, look at yourself. <laughs> look at yourself. We were soaking wet. We'd come out of cleaning out the the drainage systems down our street, you know, where the sewers were, it was a good storm, we pulled the leaves out, little boys, many little boys, and we were just having a blast doing this. But, you know, you show up and you don't quite look like, well, you know, look at yourself. Take a little time, just look at yourself. There is a shift, you know, am I, okay, we're all moving towards death in one way or another, sooner or later, and we've walked with people who've been there, and uh, Chris is wonderfully helping us hear how Jesus walks with us through that. And so he's not just saying, look at me. He's really saying, look at yourself. And he's asked us to look at a dear friend of his. He's asked us to look into relationships, uh, the real agony, uh, but the longing that's in that. So don't just look at the agony. There's longing. There's sisters here who care about their brother. Um, one of them enough that knows he was in, he's going to stink. He's been in there four days. I mean, it's a very graphic statement, isn't it? Something that's profoundly graphic and enough that Chris is letting us know that wonderfully. He said one of the shortest quotes in scriptures, and he wept. There's absolute light breaking out in this reading as we hear it, as Chris Best named it. There's, there's glory in this, as we mentioned earlier. Irenaeus has us look at that. It's the earliest experience of the church. There were two big things going on. Lots, but two big ones is, uh, God really showed up. God became one of us in a very simple, poor experience. And, and, and God said in that experience, we know it in scriptures, it's a text, a textile, it's woven in stories, it's here in our midst. And God said, I'll never let you go. It's the same God who said, my name is Yahweh. I am present with you always. And then all of a sudden, this same God um, came to us, sweated, went through it, wept, died and rose. It's a flow, living waters. It's a spreading out. It's not a disjunctive journey. It's a junction into our journey. It's a tying in with everything else that happens in the one who walks with us today. It's a tying in with our gloom. Things don't stop, they keep going. But boy, don't they feel like they stop. And Marl Lindbergh's beautiful book about hours of uh, lead and, and, uh, and days and hours of gold. I'm not quoting it right, but you might remember it. You know, the, the moments of death and gloom, of difficulty, are so burdensome. We want to hold on to the gold, the light. Well, it's here, my friends, it really is. And so from Kristen, I mean, thank you for taking us into that book. And the word that you opened for us that is just so radical because it is the early, other early experience of glory. He became one with us that we wouldn't know that we are one with God. That even though we're smudged face or climbing out of sewers and drainage ditches, we're beautiful in God's eyes. Uh, from St. Bonaventure, a great image of justice in a world broken and maybe lives that are too. In times of profound difficulty across our, our nation, we're just hearing about it a little bit this morning, you know, federal government is going to keep going, but now what's going to happen next after Thursday? You know, where do we journey in the conversations that are truly political of the people? How do we make a difference as a nation of people, people of different traditions? And Bonaventure would say, you know, acknowledging it, we're broken, and it's gloomy, we're dying, we're falling down, we're <laughs> there's a stench about us at times of death. And yet the ancient notion, and it's in Bonaventure's understanding of justice, is that justice is returning to beauty, its beauty, that which has been before. 
returning to its original beauty, that which has been deformed. I ask you, my sisters and brothers, to realize that there's something fundamentally true about us that was, is, and now, and always will be, just as Christ was, is, and always will be. And that is that we are God's glory. There's a beauty about us that's profoundly significant and glowing right here and now. Even if right now you're saying to yourself or somebody in your life, just look at them. <laughs> just look at them. We might be saying about ourselves something happened earlier today or yesterday or some experience. Yeah, I'm not worth it. I'm not. And, and, and no, the backing, the call right now is up out of that stench, up out of any grave you and I would put ourselves in, any place where a stone is rolled back and uh, right in the midst of our humanity, you know, not leaving it at all. It's not departing from having been in the world or being in it now or being where we are. It's, it's the beautiful truth, you know, and it just let me end there. It is in the beauty of who we are. It's not in becoming beautiful. It's returning to our original beauty. Now, a lot of us didn't learn that. Uh, a lot of us didn't. Uh, a lot of our practical religious experiences didn't take us there. And it's because we've modeled ourselves after the world. A scientific method said, no, you're over here and you want to get here. Yeah? And you got a lot to do to get there, especially Marv. I mean, look at the job that he's been working on. He's still at it. You know, I mean, you can look around the room, and don't we do it to, well, you know, I'm not there yet. I really feel that about myself, and I'm an old guy in this circle today. You know, There's just so much we've got to do, and that's true. Uh, but, but we are in the beginning of the beginning. We mentioned it earlier, and we believe it now. We have the same God in our midst that breathed forth life and is ah, inhaling us back in again, taking us back in. That same God breathes us out again to a new day. This is the beauty of Ruach, the spirit among us, the glory of God shining on our faces and on creation that we're invited to see. Just take a good look at yourself here in this moment. Say, so we break into a little conversation before we break bread and then move on to a, a meal of sandwiches and food. We're in the midst of the flow of the world, the flow of those living waters we talked about earlier. But it's absolutely the time for us to, you know, as you said beautifully, Christian, you, know, you took us there, and you invited us last night, too, to go and, you know, this isn't easy, and I don't really want to take a look at this. In Christ, it's not separate, nor is it in us. The moment of this day or the final moment is now. St. Catherine of Siena said, all the way to heaven is heaven. And in our lives, sometimes we say, yeah, and all the way to hell is hell. <laughs> it's tough, it's difficult, there's a stench about it. And Bonaventure says, yeah, you know, when you're feeling down, stand up. Coming to full uprightness is another image of Bonaventure for us. Standing fully upright in the nobility and goodness we are before God. And that which in any of us and in the world is deformed, wants to, with the grace, the hope, and the energy we have come back to its original beauty. It's an original beauty, we would say, with St. Irenaeus, uh, our, our, our glory. The glory that we are. The glory that God is in us. With a second reading from Romans today, the spirit that's been given to us that is literally shining forth on our faces today. The glory of God, of human persons fully alive. And a day like this allows us to return to that, to find that, and more importantly, to go forward with that a world that needs to be re renewed and reformed, a, a, a world broken around issues of justice and hurting around themes of peace and note that sometimes all we catch is the stench of things and it's right there, we hear it Jesus weeps thank you and calls us forth but it's with eyes of hope, faith and love that in the midst of all this we begin to see beauty original beauty call it forth for one another.